before we broke for lunch i was speaking to you about dying while living that's a wonderful way to find out what happens after death why wait for hearing about stories from other people when we can experience ourselves some people find this meditation difficult because of the previous habit of the mind the mind has a habit of going outside to look for things look for pleasure look for relationships it does not ever turn around to see what is inside therefore throughout our life we start relying upon the focusing of attention we focus attention on things in our daily life when we study we focus attention on the books when we talk to people we focus attention on them whenever we focus attention on something the attention goes out from the head outside good meditation is the reversing of this instead of focusing attention you withdraw attention in our consciousness we are not aware of anything except our attention we cannot control what we are seeing but we can put attention on one thing or the other if you go to a concert and have many mus- musical instruments are playing there the drums and the pipes are playing and you put your attention on the drums it appear the drums become louder and the other instruments become weaker nothing has changed there it is a, it is nothing has changed in the musical instrument it's the power of the attention to make one thing more than the other it's the same power of attention that we use to do meditation instead of putting attention on outside things we put attention on the spot inside our head from where attention is going out that is called withdrawal of attention we withdraw the attention inside since we are used to focusing attention on outside sometimes withdrawal looks difficult with practice it becomes very easy good meditation requires withdrawal of attention there is one way we can do it very easily that is to use the power of imagination if we imagine we are sitting on top of this building and concentrate on that the attention will be taken on the top of the building and we can feel we are mostly there in the same way if we imagine that we are sitting inside our head the attention can be drawn inside the power of imagination and the power of concentration of attention are two things required for good meditation yeah. we will practice it tomorrow you will also get an idea how our inner body works now i would like to open the floor for question and answer If you have any questions on any subject that I have spoken or not spoken please ask and if you have no question only answer you can give the answer also or any comment on what i said no question and so we do know that there is no death but still how can we help other person dying person to believe is you can help a dying person by reminding that person that the truth is inside and they will be met by beings who live inside i have seen that when you remind people then they are able to see people who are on the other side and it helps the dying person do we have possibility to influence our karma and in which way how yes meditation affects karma and reduces the impact of karma what is the um, uh, psychic illness when a person is like mad you know what it is and how can we help such a person how psychic illness like bodily illness mm-hmm. starts from the inner body most of our illness on the physical body is also psychic when your mind is in grief or sadness it affects the body also medical science is finding out that more than 60% of the physical illnesses are caused by the state of the mind when the mind is at peace and happy the body is health is better so it depends on our mind and ego mostly yes it depends a lot on the mind is it possible during meditation to slow down the process because sometimes when the process is leaving that process is very quick then it affects not in pleasant way physical body yes meditation can slow down many processes why after long lasting meditation it's quite difficult to concentrate on your job on your things you have to do 
If meditation is done properly, you do your job much better. If meditation is going to sharpen your consciousness, you do your job better. Meditation should be done under guidance and the guide will tell you how not to get distracted from work but make work also part of your meditation. Since meditation allows you to practice concentration of attention, the same concentration of attention is available for your job also. Meditation is not running away from your job or the worldly duties. It helps you to do them better. How to know how to send that the meditation is a perfect way, you know, that we are doing it in a good way? What kind of uh, sensation should we explain? If the concentration of attention is there, that means you concentrate your attention at one point in your head, then meditation is good and the same concentration you will find in life also. If meditation is done just by closing the eyes and thinking of the whole world, it does not lead to any benefit. How long should we meditate? One tenth of your time. They say you should give one tenth of your income as charity, give one tenth of your time in meditation. There are 24 hours, so two and a half hours in every 24 hours is good meditation. So during uh, the day at once, uh, two and a half hours? Should we you can break into many pieces. It depends on the jobs we are doing. Sometimes people have night jobs. They have jobs at different times. They can adjust the timing of meditation. And so long as you have done two and a half hours in 24 hours, even in small sections, it is good. But uh, sometimes one it appears, you know, natural way, for example, during our job or when driving, like, you know, our mind is going out. So maybe that is also a kind of, we can lean at, uh, keep this at med as meditation. Yes, meditation is not merely uh, sitting formally with your eyes closed. Meditation can be done even while walking, talking, cooking and your daily life. And I will be talking to you more details tomorrow. Meditation is not only an exercise at a certain time, it is a way of life. The highest form of meditation is that which is done with love and devotion. When you love somebody, you do not figure out how many hours you have done it. You think of the beloved all the time. Meditation is like that. Yes, no, and what's about the relationship with the religion? Because the religion says that everything depends on God. Meditation will take you to God. Religion takes you to rituals. All religions that I have studied say that the truth is inside us. God is not to be found outside but within your consciousness. The Creator operates from within us in consciousness to create the whole experience. Religions have said that this body is the kingdom of God. If you want to find God, go inside this temple and not outside temples. There is no contradiction between religion and meditation. You can belong to any religion and still practice meditation. The practice of meditation does not require anyone to change one religion. In fact, it encourages you to follow your religion more closely. Yes, ask. Don't feel shy. The mind is kept busy in repeating words that it doesn't like. The mind is made to think of the experiences inside us rather than run outside. The mind is made to think of experiences happening inside us rather than outside things. <coughs> During meditation, there are three kinds of distractions. One is that you want to concentrate in your head, but the mind thinks of outside things and goes away with the thoughts. The second distraction is there are sounds outside and they distract you. The third distraction is you remember faces of other people outside and those faces come in front of you. In the technique of meditation, we are taught how to handle all these three. When we talk of repetition of mantras, repetition of holy words, it is nothing but telling the mind to think of those words and not of outside things. When we tell the mind to listen to the sound that is lying inside us and not listen to outside sounds, it takes care of the second distraction. When we teach the mind to think of the beloved face and not any other face, it takes care of the third distraction. If we think of the beloved, 
which in this case happens to be the master's face, mm -hmm. who's giving unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Or anybody where you get experience of unconditional love, think of that face, mm -hmm. it takes away other faces. Mm -hmm. All these three things are important in meditation. Mm -hmm. When we are taught correct meditation, we are taught how to take care of all these three things. The teacher who teaches us this kind of meditation must have practiced it himself. There is no qualification required of a perfect living master except he should have done what he is teaching. A, a person who is meditating, he helps himself, but can he help others as well? Yes, a person who meditates helps himself and he also helps all the others around because his nature changes, his attitude changes, it benefits everybody around him. Through meditation, one becomes more humble and sees the beauty of the same creator in everybody. When you can see the creator in same creator, same God in everybody, then it is very difficult not to love everybody. Meditation helps in that. Also the ego of the meditator goes down. Instead of saying, I am doing this, I am doing this, he just looks at the other person and says, you are there for whom I am serving. So everybody benefits with one person's meditation. Meditation does not mean running away from anybody. Your relationships improve, your attitude improves, and your sense of humor gets better. We all have eight senses. Five are the senses of perception. Seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling. The sixth sense is better than these five. Sixth sense is intuition which is listening to the inner voice. The seventh sense is even better. In English, we call it common sense. It is very uncommon. <laughs> common sense is the art of finding out what is important, what is not. So much of our life we waste in unimportant things. We argue, we argue with people over such minor things which don't matter at all. If somebody is thinking differently from us, we get angry and we argue with our voice raised. Later on we find it was no use at all. I have seen learned people discussing what is in a book and one person says, no, this is what the book says. Other person says, no, it is not like that. And they argue so much they almost come to blows. And none of the, none of the two are practicing what the book is saying. So they waste so much time on unimportant things. What makes a big change in life is right priorities to put the more important things first and less important things last. This all is called common sense. The eighth sense is more important than all these. It's called the sense of humor, the ability to laugh. To be ability to laugh and be amused at every part of life. To be able to look at life and say, so what? Very often, most of the things don't matter at all. If you have a sense of humor, you can laugh at your own situation. To be able to smile and laugh is a great art. You try it out, if somebody is very angry with you, just smile. And the other person wonders why he's angry. Is there a kind of limit, age limit for meditation? There is no age limit. Anybody from five years old to 90 years old can do it. Yeah. I was going to say 80, but I am myself 85. A child of five years old can do it and an old man of 90 years can do it. If you are old when you start meditation, you should say better late than never. Is there the ninth sense? I have not found it yet. I am looking for it. If anybody else has it, please tell me. I think eight are enough. Eight is also my lucky number. When you write eight, it's the only infinite number. So we can start from the eighth one just to say, so, so what? Oh yes, there's a good mantra. <laughs> Another good mantra in life is, uh, whenever anything happens which you don't think is too good, you say, it could have been worse. Just that in every situation, it could have been worse. When we look at people who are better than us, we feel bad. When we look at people lower than us, worse than us, we have compassion. Many happy people depend upon this factor that they say, thank God we are not in that shape, we are in better shape. 
If you compare your life with people in third world countries, in Africa, in Ethiopia, and go and see them, you will say, thank God we are not like that. A man was compla complaining about his shoes till he saw a man with no legs. We can always count our blessings. So, but this, you know, worry about our shoes over, you know, overtakes us so quickly that we do not have time to think about, you know, those people who do not have legs. That is why I say, if you can remember that there are people who have less, then you will feel satisfied and count your blessings. It is a way of looking at life in perspective. No more questions. If talking about priorities, which one is most important? Your, your priority. In my priority. Okay. Yes. In my priority, to know who I am is the most important. When I found out who I was, I found out all of us are the same one. We are all extensions of the same single consciousness. It's a very great feeling to know that we are all one. I have never felt I've come to a strange place. I come to Kaunas and I feel I've always lived here. The one priority can make that difference. So uh, could we say then that the Creator is the only one and He or it can see, observe the life through the many eyes of many That is people. correct. Thank All you. of us are different points of view of the single Creator. The Creator, having created a grand show, has placed himself in every place so he could watch his show from different angles. And had you possibility to experience the various kinds of uh, uh, relationships? And the can create experience the very different uh, uh, kind, of relationship. kind of relationships? Like what? What relationship? There are very many different kinds of relationships between people, and does it mean that God experiences all those different kinds yes. of relationships? Yes. The basic experiences of love and appreciation. Think of it that we want to love God. What does God want? Appreciation. If we appreciate what we get, God is happy. He has created many kinds of relationships, but all the relationships are experienced with an underlying love. Love is the underlying basis. There's a different relationship between a man and a woman, different relationship between a mother and a child, different relationship between two friends, different relationship we have with God, different relationship we have with a spiritual teacher. They're all different relationships, but the underlying factor is love. But love is not the same thing as attachment. When you love somebody, you forget about yourself. You think of the person you love. When you think more of yourself, that is ego and not love. When people say very loudly, I love you, I love you, I notice they love I more than you. That's like an ego game. So the meditation is the path to get out from the ego and experience unconditional love, yes? Yes, this takes you to the experience of pure love. Are there borders going consciously into the bodily pain? Let's say it again. Are there borders when you go ex into the pain of body? When you accept body, accept pain of the body, are yes. there borders? Does it mean Torching yourself or not loving yourself. When you have experience of pain. Yes. No, the experience of pain. Experience of pain 
could be an experience of a karmic event that has happened or it could be a pain because of a disappointment you got. It can be pain on the body, it can be pain emotionally, it can be pain mentally, the different kinds of pains. But pain is one thing which makes this world look real. Sometimes we feel very high, flying lightly with our body till pain comes, then this world becomes real. Pain has been used as one element to create reality in this world. It does not mean you should inflict pain on yourself or anybody else. And if you have pain on your body, the meditational techniques draw your attention away and the pain is borne much easily. So there is a saying, do not be a masochist, just take a pill and kill your pain. Distract yourself from the pain and forget the pain. Meditation helps in that. So it means that the better way is to see that pain, to accept it, and uh, to deal it through meditation. Yes. <laughs> I had undergo surgery in my knee recently, got a knee replacement, and in hospital, people who were in pain, I told them jokes, they forgot their pain. <laughs> and if the joke wasn't enough, I showed them card tricks. They were so amazed by the trick, they forgot the pain. Distraction works to take pain away. Did you manage to do it without anesthesia? No, they did, they did give me local anesthesia. They never asked me my opinion. But I wanted to see my surgery. They put a blue curtain in front of me. I couldn't see. But they treated my leg like it was made of wood, like a carpenter. They did not look like surgeons to me. They looked like carpenters. But I laughed at them. But I was able to laugh at it. I laughed every day I was in hospital and made every other patient laugh. And also the doctors and nurses. There's great power in the sense of humor. So if you have good thoughts already, so why still the body gets sick? Why do you need operation? Body gets sick because to have a physical body, you must have a combination of high and low. If all my karma was very good, I would be sitting in heaven. If all my karma was bad, I was sitting in hell. We have to have a mixture of the two to become human being. That's why we go through all these experiences. If we know this theory, if we know this fact, then life becomes easy, even when it's high or low. Meditation helps us to see the big picture. You see how all the systems of creation are operating. You understand why you are here. You understand why we are many. You understand why we have relationships. It's not a random thing, it's a big design. Through higher meditation, you reach a point where you can see the whole show. All the mysteries of life are solved. All the answers to your questions are lying inside. When you see the big picture, how this show has been set up in different successive levels, then you find there is no contradiction anywhere. Why is there so much suffering in this world, at the same time so much pleasure? Why the pairs of opposites have been created? Why light and darkness both have to coexist? How this whole world of duality was created against the truth of unduality? All these things become very clear through higher meditation. You don't have to go to anybody to ask questions. The answers are lying inside you. Even at this level, when somebody asks me a question, I know the answer is already in that person. When I give a correct answer, the person says, yes, yes, that's what I, I knew. If I give a foolish answer, nobody accepts it. We never ask a new question. We ask questions to which we have not found a verbal answer. Whoever gives a correct answer is only verbalizing our own answer. All the wisdom lies inside us and all of us have it. Uh, how is it better to meditate on your own or better in groups with other people? It depends on the kind of meditation you do. Sometimes when you meditate on your own, then time flows differently. Supposing you want to meditate for two hours and you try to meditate on your own, then five minutes of meditation looks like two hours and you get tired. When there's a group, then for the sake of the group, you keep on meditating. So in the beginning, group meditation is helpful. Mm -hmm. 
when we are in the beginning of meditation and we have not had any great experiences inside, it looks hard. And therefore, we think it's a chore, it's a difficult task to do meditation. And so, time moves very slowly. But when good things start coming in the meditation, like great scenes, great out-of-body experiences, flights into other regions of life, other regions of consciousness, then you feel good and you can meditate for very long on your own. Even on your own, then you can meditate. Then you can meditate on very successfully. In the beginning, group meditation is useful. Now, sometimes we do meditation like it is a job given to us to do and we don't like it. Meditation that way is no good. We, we should have some interest in meditation. I went to visit a friend who was a great meditator. I heard that he meditates regularly in the early morning from 3 o'clock to 5.30. I stayed with him and he said, we will meditate together. So I sat in meditation with that man. We both sat cross-legged. And uh, I was interested in seeing how he meditates. So I was not properly meditating. I was opening my eye and looking at him. Every few minutes, he would open his eyes slightly and look at his watch. After two and a half hours, he said, it was great meditation. I said, I'm sorry, I cheated. I saw through you are meditating more on your watch than inside. It's not worthwhile doing forced meditation like that. It's better to do 15 minutes of intensive meditation than two and a half hours like that. It's the quality of meditation more important than the quantity. How do you understand when you meditate good, when properly? When you enjoy it, it's good meditation. When you think it is a job to be done, it's not good meditation. Then the physical body, the building of physical body, a well-prepared physical body has influence on meditation because, for example, in yoga, they do asanas to, to build, to strengthen the body. Yes, uh, uh, bodily health is important for meditation. If your body is not in good shape, then wherever the body is aching or hurting, your attention goes there and not good for meditation. So body should be in a healthy state. The yogis in India who practice yoga did not think that the exercise of the body are part of yoga. They used 84 different asanas or postures of the body just to prepare the body. Meditation was drawing your attention inside. As yoga traveled to the west, it became more and more of exercises and less of concentration of attention. And meditation in sitting in a lotus maybe is more productive and more useful than sitting in an armchair. It depends. The idea of a correct meditation posture is it should be comfortable enough not to draw the attention to the body, uncomfortable enough not to go to sleep. Some people say, why can't we meditate lying down? I say, because you go to sleep. Some people even go to sleep while they are sitting. I was myself talking of meditation one time and uh, I was telling them how to meditate. I closed my eyes and I was very tired. Soon I found I was snoring myself. I opened my eyes and everybody was staring at me. The tendency to sleep is very strong in meditation. When you put in a lotus position in your body, or you make the different asanas for meditation prescribed. The whole idea is that the body should be in such a phase that you don't feel sleepy. And at the same time, it is not so uncomfortable and painful that the attention is drawn to the pain and not to meditation. And we don't have to copy anybody else. It's genetically we are different. People in some cultures, they are used to sitting on the floor used to crossing their legs, sitting in lotus position normally. For them it is normal. People who have not been so trained, like in the West, we sit on chairs most of the time, don't sit on the floor. To sit on the chair on the floor and try to have an artificial position does not make meditation easy at all. It is better to understand the principle behind this, which is not so comfortable as to go to sleep, not so uncomfortable as to be distracted in the body. You can sit on a chair upright, it's good enough.
Well, thank you very much for coming and joining me today, and we'll be here tomorrow for meditation.